What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning into my channel. Um, I'm just gonna make a few videos so you guys can see what I do for a living. Something that most people don't even know about and those who know that there is such work, they really don't know what it takes to do this kind of work. Um, I refinish bathtubs. I also do countertops but most of the business and most of the money is in the bathtubs and the reason is because there is a bigger demand and it is a necessity. I do a lot of Section 8 housing and they will not pass inspection until those tubs are in excellent condition. So if there's any kind of rust, um, they have to call me, it will fail inspection. Um, they don't even try. As soon as they see rust, they call me and I do the work. And it's pretty lucrative. I mean, the overhead is fairly low. The work is easy. Nobody bothers me and by myself, and nobody wants to be in the room or in the apartment when I'm doing it because the paint smells extremely sour um, and I'm spraying it. I'm not rolling it like the painters in, in there. So usually when the painters are there and they see me coming, they leave. And that's why nobody knows exactly what it takes to do a tub. Um, so first thing is the PPE. Put your knee pads on. Um, get your ear protection on. Always gloves, you are kneeling by where the toilet is, so you gotta protect yourself, especially nowadays with COVID. Yeah, I said the C word. Anyway, after scraping off any excess paint that it might have had, which I did see on the outside and some on the inside drip from the painter dripping paint, um, now I'm matching the tub, and I'm basically taking the original glaze that's on the tub, the factory glaze. So after I'm done doing this, the tub will actually be completely dull. There will not be a shiny spot in it. And basically all you have to do is rub this stuff all over. I'm just using a paper towel. Normally I use a cheap paintbrush, but right now for the video's sake, um, I didn't want to go back to the truck to find the brush. I was already in the middle of recording, so I just grabbed the paper towel and I just rubbed it all over. You just gotta let it sit for about 10 minutes. Um, I'm not gonna put you through that, but and I am being careful, this stuff burns, let me tell you. It may not look like I'm being careful, but I am. And after 10 minutes, just come back in, turn on the hot water and just wash it off. Wash it off real good and you make sure you get it all off because if you do not, everywhere where you missed, it will leave a white powdery film and that will make the paint bubble up and you'll have to go back and do a repair and because of the warranty you will have to go back and do the repair for free and if you decide to do this as a business yeah you will not earn money and for other companies that you might work for they might have you do the warranty work it'll be under your name and you might have to go back and not get paid for it so some companies work the same as if you uh, own the company it's 1099 and you have to cover your own warranty and do a good job and so now, after it's all been wiped down and dried, I'm cutting off the uh, old caulking. Nice clean blade, and just get in there. And if you have a nice clean blade, it will come off pretty easy. There I'm switching the heads on the blade. So I can do the top part and get it in there real good. And that's pretty much it. You do have to be careful. As I'm pulling that, some debris is falling in the tub right now. You'll see later where I'm cleaning that out and blowing it out. You just gotta get all the old stuff off. There are some places that I don't even caulk. I just remove the caulking and I spray the tub. And some places I do caulk. Most places I do uh, the caulking, but uh, there are a couple of maintenance managers who wanna put their own caulking. They'll come in a couple days later or a day later after I'm done and they'll put their own caulking in. Now I'm just drying out the floor because I'm gonna tape up and cover the floor also. And that's pretty much it. It's time to start taping. First thing I do is take my one glove off and I do this over and over again. This is how you pick up speed without making mistakes. You do the same thing over and in the same exact order over and over again. And then I'll do the shower head. And I usually leave those on there. After I tear down and I'm all done, I leave those on there to keep the cleaning people from walking in and turning on the tub without even checking to see if it's been refinished. And even though I could come back and make some more money over their mistake, 
I don't really want to make my money that way. So I keep the glove on the faucet and I keep the glove on the shower head. So if somebody comes in and turns that knob, they could shut it back off real quick. Now, as you can see, I'm taking my time. You notice I'm really looking down at that tape line. And there's a reason for that. I make, that's the first tape line I put on and it's the last one I take off. And the reason why I take my time doing that is because that is where the caulk line will be. And like most of the guys, when they see me do a tub, they don't notice that I do that. The painters and the maintenance guys will always ask me, how do you get a perfect caulk line like that? It looks almost factory made. And that's how I do it. It's that perfect tape line. You take an extra 30 seconds to put that tape line perfectly straight. And then when you put a caulk line on there, you just run your finger against that tape line and it'll be as straight as the tape is. Now I'm just papering up and I'm using my best friend, the 3M paper masking machine. And I'll tell you, if you're gonna do this and if you do it for someone and they do not provide that, buy it yourself. This is a lifesaver, a time saver. So what if it costs a little bit of money? It does, it's about $30. It's worth it. You can always make the $30 back. You cannot make the time back that you waste after doing you know it might save me an extra 15 minutes all right but after doing four tubs that's an hour I've saved that week after doing eight tubs that's two hours you can't make the time back you can always make the money back so here I am doing a final blow dry on it making sure I get all the debris out if any uh, little pieces of caulking fell in there that I didn't see now I'm getting ready to prime and I always check my spray and there I go and same thing vertically then horizontally and that's what I do with the primer and the top coat and I do it exactly the same every single time no matter what no matter which way the tub is facing right now the, the water side is on the left but if the water side was on the right I would do it exactly the same and this is how you become more efficient and much faster and the faster you are the more money you earn instead of just moving fast and doing everything fast. If you continue to do the same thing exactly the same way, you'll become more faster at it, more efficient. Now I'm just blow drying it um, between coats. And all I do is put two coats of primer and two coats of top coat white, gloss white. As you can see, I put some air on it. It's a light to medium coat. The second coat will be a medium to heavy. And you'll see what I do after that. Here I go now. I should, if I remember correctly, make a liar out of myself, go horizontally now. I went vertically before, now I will do the long, go long ways. And get in there real good, make sure it's the last, second and final coat. And I cover it pretty good. Let me tell you, if I were to slow this video down, you would see that I am covering it very well. I even turn the nozzle on that to spray like a circular motion and get the corners in because that's a spot that's easy to miss. And you see I spray the edges and the corners and even on the outsides. Sometimes you don't get the gun that far down. Okay, so here's my trick to make sure the primer is done. Um, I just tape the compressor hose to the towel rack there. And I turn it on and I just blow dry and I just blow dry for about 10 minutes which is better than just waiting for it to dry for about a half hour I just put some air on there and I use that time to clean my primer gun and mix my top coat gun now through the magic of editing that was about 10 minutes and now I'm gonna top coat this I have mixed my uh, top coat white gloss and here I go and as you can see I am going vertically again, just as I did with the primer. And then I'll go horizontally. Now, the reason why I put that air on there, two reasons. I don't want to wait 20 to 30 minutes for it to dry, and I do need it to dry. Uh, if you don't let that primer dry, what happens is that top white, top coat white will dry faster than the primer. And when it does, it will pull, it will tighten, and pull the primer off the tub 
and you'll get some weird bubbles on the curves. This is a big problem. I even used to, I mean, it was the hardest thing to train the guys is, is to wait, to wait for that primer to dry. Um, the top coat just dries extremely fast. In fact, after I put the second coat of top coat, I won't even have to tie the compressor hose to the towel rack to blow dry it like I did before. I could just stand there and give it some air and it'll be dry to the touch. It won't be cured. And yes, if I press on it, you'll see a fingerprint. The primer's different though. It doesn't uh, work that way. It does take longer to dry. So if you do not give it time to dry, yes, the top coat will pull that primer off the tub and you will have bubbles on that tub. They will crack, they will open, and you'll have to go back. And what do you know, that is it. I'm done, I'm now working my way backwards, folding my drop cloth. Now I'm gonna start pulling the paper off. Just gotta be real careful, because I'll tell you what, if you make a mistake, what will happen here is that will fall towards the tub and the tape will fall facing the tub. And when you go to pull it, it will peel both the top coat and the primer. It's happened a bunch of times to me and it will always happen. It's just, you know, part of the big mistakes in your lives when you're doing refinishing. A piece of tape will fall in that tub if you're not careful. And that's pretty much it. I just pull everything back. As you can see, the video is basically like going backwards. And now I have my, uh, caulk line there that first initial line of tape I'm taking the overflow tape off and the drain flow off and yes take the tape off the drain because if you leave it for the maintenance guys they will yank it off and that tape will pull some of the uh, paint off the bottom of the tub and that's a crucial spot down there at the bottom because the water will get underneath that paint if you rip the paint off the drain that's pretty much it I'm just using my tube of caulking and I'm running it across that tape line nice and easy and I don't even have to try and do well I just gotta push that thing out as you can see I'm squeezing the crap out of it as if it was the last of the toothpaste I have it rolled up and I just run that tube all the way across and after that I'll run my finger all the way across real fast without even thinking about it I don't even have to try with the tape there. And then I just pull the tape. And that's it. Just like that. I have etched, primed, I have etched, prepped, primed, top coat, caulked a tub. I'm just pressing down that little edge because if you uh, sometimes when you pull the tape, it'll pull it off the wall just slightly. And that's pretty much it. I'm all done and I'm pretty much all cleaned up. And there you go, folks. It, that took about two and a half to three hours. That is a $400 tub. And I don't know anywhere else where I can work and make $400 in three hours. Nowhere. And that's the norm. Every now and then you might get a tub that might take you four or five hours, and every now and then you might get an easy tub that will take you two hours, but that is it. Thanks for watching, guys. Come back and check out more videos.